Hello there, I'm New Era Farmer and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be kicking off a mini series based on a typical British farm, arable farm, in the early 90s sort of through 2000s. Um, the setting is Oakfield Farm as it's the closest British farm I can get to that sort of resembles what I want to do with this series. There will be a mix of machines from again early early 90s right up till now sort of thing but mainly because I couldn't find everything that I wanted which I grew up with as a I searched the mods I searched all the all the mod websites and well this is what I've come up with really hopefully you will enjoy it as I will hopefully enjoy making it and hopefully teach you some aspects of farming that you may have may have not known well aspects of arable farming that is um, I work within the agriculture industry I like to think that I've got a good all-round sound knowledge of most agricultural practices so yeah this will be a this will be a, a nice interesting memoir of growing up I feel so we will start it off really with ground preparation like early spring so today's episode will be cultivating ploughing kind of seed preparation bed preparation kind of scenario and then we'll move on to drilling put up putting seeds in that sort of thing and then we move on to looking after your crops fertilizing spraying all that sort of thing then there's your good housekeeping of the farm uh, tidying up workshop practices maintenance verge mowing all that kind of things and then we're moving to harvest and yeah show you what um the start and finish of a british farm as such this series will uh, it'll be a bit of role play a bit of a bit of acting that just to make it a bit more interesting i'll create some funny scenarios and real scenarios based on what i've grew up with and what i've encountered with within my work so it's 10 past nine in the morning just our breakfast bit late bit late for a farmer i know um we're halfway through the the plowing season for spring spring drilling as such um just had a call in from the farmer down the road or the landowner down the road and he wants a bit of plowing done on one of his sheep fields i think he wants to put turnips in or something a bit more sustenance for the, the sheep to eat as such so i think we shall hastily get on with that so we have the Ford a bit dirty 80, 830 this was back in its heyday an absolute weapon of a tractor this was an iconic tractor to see in the field these would just keep going and going and going rumour has it if they will span then you're, you're doing something wrong because these never will span and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, five, I can't remember. Six, six for our Lemkin plough. Blue on blue. And I think that does the job nicely, really. I say we're a bit dirty because we've had quite a busy ploughing season. It's been quite a wet year, so we've left most of the drilling until now sort of thing. So I think we'll go and find our, our matey boy and do some ploughing for him. Field's not too far away. Sort of give you a little tour of the farm. We've got the corn cart gang down there. There's a few implements down there, but we won't get onto those just yet. This episode today is on ploughing and this awesome Ford right here. Got JCB Lodo in the shed. Unfortunately, I couldn't find sort of a 90s era one on on the mods on the websites. I'm sure a few guys know of one can link me or message me because I'd really like to have one there's our our lorry machine moves and grain handling and that's the old fur shed so once we get into fertilize into fertilizing we'll um we'll fill that shed up full of bags so we're heading to field 13 oh there's the old combine washed off from last year it's been all serviced up had a class technician out look over it and give us a whopping great bill for not a lot of work so 
Just taking it steady along here. A bit bouncy. Ah, church bells are ringing. Must be Sunday service. Get a job! Get a job! Can't stop to go to church. Plowing to do, mate. Right, where's that entrance? I think it's right here. Take it nice and steady. Got a big old tail swing. Right. Here we go, there's the field. Oh, I think I just whacked his bush. Sorry, mate. I see he lives there as well. I hope you did see that. Ooh. And we're in. Right. When I spoke to him earlier on the phone, he said just do right off the path. So, not a lot of ploughing to do. So, we'll leave that bit to the left there. We'll do a bit of ploughing here. You are dirty, isn't ya? You need a wash. How, how, how have you stayed dirty up there and your wheels are not? Hey? Eh? God knows. Get the old plough set up. Fold it. Ready to go. Right. Good rule of well, good rule of ploughing is find your your longest run. What you think your longest run is? So a little drive around the field. So this is the longest side of our field here. If we carry around and find the shortest side, sort of, I reckon, I reckon that's going to be our shortest side. We sort of divided the field up to what we think is a good working area. And what I usually do is, I'll do my straight line on a point in the distance. So that tree, that tree looks, that looks rather nice there. Just back up a bit more. The further back you can go, the less headland work you do, and everyone hates headlands. And I think, I think we'll drop that there and have a go. Right, so I'm just keeping me, me eye on that tree in the distance there. And heading towards it. I have had a, a rather funny experience a few years ago when I used to work on the, the coast-ish area. I was following what I thought was a tree in the distance and it turns out it was a boat it was a boat's mast and you can imagine my um, my straight line wasn't exactly straight so that was quite annoying because it was my first my first line out if you know what I mean and yeah it was more S shaped it was the worst line I've ever done ever so right, that's me line done We'll spin the plough around. We'll line up for the next run. Drop a drop a tire in the furrow because it's not a not a land plough. She's set up for sort of the middle ish of the tractor. And then we don't want to drop the plough on his path, so we're we're edging a bit more, edging a bit more. And about there looks good. Yeah, that looks nice. Following, uh, keeping the wheel in the furrow. When you get a good good run going, you you can let go of the steering wheel on a, in real life as such because the the wheel just stays in the furrow. Quite handy, really. If back in the when we didn't have GPS. All right, so that's another good one. Spin it round. I'll do one more run up before I'll uh, sort of 
I reckon I'll fast forward time a bit. Can't imagine you guys want to see me plough this whole field. But I'll give you a gist of what I know. So right, we're spudding the plough. Don't want to be in the hedge, sort of there. And we drop it down. And now what you want, you'll get each run, you'll get like these V's. So you see that bit of grass there. As the further you go along, it'll all be like your ins and outs will be like a V shape. And you want to try and keep them as equal as you can. Because it helps with the headlands at the end. Because you don't want to be trying to weave in and out of your runs because they're not matching. So if you can spend time on your ins and outs, like lifting out, lifting in sort of thing, then your headlands will be so much easier. Right, so coming up there. Don't want to get the path because we probably won't get paid if we rip his path up. And that looks good there. Spin the plow. Back around we go. And I think I will just crack on with this. So, speak to you guys in a, in a tinkle. Right, so that's all the the land work done as such. He said to leave a couple of metres from this hedge for wildlife and whatnot, so with a headland run that probably work out about right. And as you can see, my ins and outs are all lovely apart from one. I um I took a sip of tea on that one I think and slightly dug up his path, so hopefully he won't notice because other than that, that is military. That is military ploughing. That is that is good. And my straight line stayed pretty much decent all the way, all the way along. A few corrections now and then. So, in regards to ploughing the headlands, sometimes this can take as long as doing the middle of the field because it's so fiddly. But we're quite lucky. We got a bit of a runoff here, and I've left a bit of sort of runoff there, so we've got room to turn. That corner over there is going to be a bit difficult. That corner there is going to be a bit difficult, but I've ploughed as close as I can get it, so there's there's less headland to plough as such. So you can either when you when you start off, you can either have an open furrow on the edge of the field, which is what I prefer, or you can have an open furrow on your last runs where your where your V's and your ins and outs are. Personally, I hate I hate having an open furrow right there because if you don't cultivate that in properly you are having painful painful years of, of baling corn car you're in the combine you're going to hit that open fire every time you are going to hit your head on the roof you're going to spill your tea you're going to hit the steering wheel with your knees it's just not nice but each to their own but i'm going to start from the outside i think so and sort of find the edge of his path and away we go Right, so that is the field done. I mean, I could have been a bit more tidy on the headlands, but I hate doing headlands, and I just wanted to get it done at that point. But you get the gist. Try and keep your lines nice and straight. Work the short work at the end or at the start, however you want to work, but always divide the field up and find the longest run you can, and then that gives you a really good straight line to work across whichever way you go good rule of thumb is always try and work your way back to the gate so you're not driving over the ploughed field or messing up any corners or anything like that 
for there. Right, towards the end then, the old 30 series, the, the temperatures started to get up. I've got a horrible feeling Mr. Fix It All Repair Daily as, a, as an awesome workhorse it is. It's just the age. She's just getting tired. I think it's got a coolant leak. Judging by the the prop being so clean, I think the, the coolant's dropping on that and washing the old prop off, so unfortunately, I think this has got to go in the workshop. So we'll we'll limp it back. Limp it back to the workshop. There's no warning lights, so I must have enough coolant in there. We'll, we'll take it steady, I think, back. I don't wanna do an engine rebuild on this. Oh no. Oh no, today is not going good. First a coolant leak. And I think I'll just nipped his his gate post on the way out. It looks okay. I think I might have just nicked it with the marker board there. My power looks okay. Oh, panic over. Panic over. Let's just get this. Let's just get this back to the workshop. Come on, girl. Let's limp you back nice and slowly. We do not want you cooking up. The back entrance to the farm here, past the old church goers. They'll probably still be in church, it's only quarter to ten. Just sometimes hear them singing through the windows. Oh god. Yeah. Crack on guys. Keep those hymns a coming. You're poorly, aren't you? You are so poorly. Now temps are creeping up a bit now. We'll just keep it, we'll nurse it back, we'll nurse it back nice and steady. I don't know whether to call the dealer up or have a go myself. It's probably just a split hose or something. Or I hope the rad ain't cracked because that's quite expensive. It had one about two years ago, I think, the radiator. It was a reconned one, so... They don't last as long. Might bite the bullet and stick a genuine Ford Rad on, if they've got one in stock. I think I'll leave the plough on. I'm not too fussed about taking the plough off at the minute, but we'll get it straight in the workshop. It might be a simple fix. I hope the old man's got his eyes, his glasses on today. The last thing I need is him crashing into the back of the plough. Right. I suppose I better give you a, a tour of the farm. Quickly. You're trying to get yourself run over, mate! Just go up here, up and right. I just want to check, check some of the fields up here before I show you some of the machines. I sprayed off a load of um, stubble up here on the left. Just want to see if it's withering a bit. Oh, that's withered nicely. I think if we uh, get the Ford repaired, there'll be some ploughing out there. That's a big field. It's on its rotation for ploughing. Reluctantly, it needs ploughing. I could hire a contractor in. Big case quad track or something, and a big 14 furrow. If the, if the Ford's cooking itself on a tiny little field like that, then I think her days are numbered. But it's just, oh, you've, you've paid for it. It's just such a good machine to run. 
cheap horsepower, cheap horsepower. Right, this is my cultivating shed as such. And here we have 8670, the old Genesis. This usually just stays on the carrier and does a bit of drilling. We've got a new drill this year, Vadisad Rapid. Rapid, Rapid, whoever you want to say it. This is brand new, hasn't done anything yet, ready for, for spring. And we should be putting a fair amount of wheat in, a bit of spring wheat, I think. But, yep, that's been busy as well. I washed this off the other day, but I haven't washed this off yet. These are washing the grease, to be honest, because that's been following the plough around. So that's my Genesis, my, my 70 series, big, big, big horsepower, big cultivation tractor. Back it up, back it up. What have you done? What have you done? So my trailed hardy sprayer. Is what it is. Sprays. Now we have a couple of classics here. This is my corn cart gang. But regularly one of these two will be spraying as well. One of them will be doing the furt spinning. Sometimes I, I quite like the, uh, the seven, eight, ten on the on the furt spinner, and I usually stick the oh, what are they blooming called. I usually stick the fin wheels on this row crops. That's the word I was looking for. Row crops on this, and that does all the spraying. But this one here, this is one of my all-time favourite tractors. Growing up, I was always in the passenger seat of one of these. Awesome, awesome tractor. 16 ton Baileys, don't need much more than that. We haven't got a high output combine as of yet. So, yeah, that's my corn cart team. Oh, I forgot to add. One of the best New Hollands ever made. TM155. And you could uh, screw it up. 190 horsepower you'll get out 145 easy and the most reliable New Orleans they ever made cracking couple of tracks they are almost time for tea 10 o'clock we've just cleaned out the grain shed the last load of wheat went the other day so I gave the old Agri Pro, a bit of a wash off. Awesome bit of kit. Nice reach. Three ton lift. Don't need much more else than that. Defender. Yeah, so the farm's just starting to pick up now. Had a, a really wet year. Lorry gang gang. Oh, I think the spreaders in here. So yeah, they've had quite a wet year. Didn't really get anything in the ground, so we've got half our farm to drill. It's the first spinner. I think this time next week this shed will be full of fertiliser. Try and give the crops the best possible start they can get. I think I bottomed out the plough there. Oh, that's not good. I might have to get the digger out and grade this hill a bit. Dear, oh dear. And here we go. The old Dominator. We've had this combine since new. 20 odd years we've had this. Does the job. It is getting old though. We're starting to get a bit more ground. I think we'll do one more season with this and we'll start looking at something bigger. I'm not sure what to get. New Holland, class, case. Maybe you guys can have a vote and let me know what you think. Which combine should I get next season? She's getting tired, and I don't want any breakdowns. Breakdowns mean no harvesting. 
and I hate fixing stuff. I just want to get in and get on. But as you can see by our, our funds, we haven't got a massive amount of money. We've had a bad year. We're still running old kit. We need to have a good couple of years. But now nah, we shall see. Some good finance packages out there at the minute. It's time for a cup of tea, I think. Well, there's the dog. I don't know. Ah, there you go. You heard me. Where you been? Hmm? That brings us to the end of the first episode, I think. That's nice it is. A bit of ploughing. Sets us up ready. We need to um, start prepping the ploughed fields and all that ready, really. We want to get a nice seed bed ready for, for, for drilling. So next, next time round, I think, yeah, we'll whack on the... Put the 70s series on the on the Vadisad Rapide and start getting that wheat in. So until next time, cheerio.